Hello there. During my travels around uh, the UK, I get asked this question quite a lot. How do we get free environmental agency data into the Autodesk Infrastructure Design Suite software? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. My name is Ian Robinson. I'm the Infrastructure Technical Specialist located in the UK. I'll give you my contact details there. If you have any queries, by all means, um, you can contact me. I'll leave that back up at the end so you can pause it and uh, write it down later on. <clears throat> so the question that I get asked is, how do I get free data? Um, and the answer is through data.gov.uk. This is part of the Inspire Directive, which is a European directive to allow you to share spatial data across government organisations and the Environment Agency sits in there and they've got a lot of flown LiDAR data sets as well as things like flood areas etc and there's a whole bunch of organisations that have put data in there from local authorities through to the National Grid uh, Environment Agency and of course the OS they have open source data as well um, that you can uh, access so in this how-to video, I'm going to be using Autodesk software, in particular InfoWorks 360 stroke InfoWorks 360 LT. I'll explain which does which when we get to it. And I'll be using the Environment Agency LiDAR data and placing that straight into InfoWorks. Um, and then I'll stick on some Bing maps and uh, also show you the Ordnance Survey maps. I'll then be using AutoCAD Civil 3D and show you how you can bring that same data into Civil. And there's a couple of ways of doing that because Civil 3D has got map built into it. So you can do it using the map functionality. I'll use the AutoCAD Map 3D and show you how you can bring that data into AutoCAD Map 3D and drape images on it, etc. Right, let's get straight on to it. So, if you go to data.gov.uk, you can see the uh, address up there, and do a search for Environment Agency or LiDAR Point Cloud, and you'll come, you'll land eventually on this page here. Um, part of the Open Government Licence, and they have basically been out anywhere between 25 centimetre and 2 metre LiDAR, so there's some uh, good quality data out there. And all you need to do is in the resource locator, you can go direct link and it'll open up the web page which allows you to download the data. So let's just go. The city that I'm working in is Exeter. So we can zoom in and you can get uh, some quite high quality uh, uh, mapping data in there. I'll zoom back out there and just select the tile that I want. These are 10 kilometer tiles. And you can see in this area here, uh, using the OS Grid Reference SX99, we've got 2 meter, 1 meter, and 50 centimeter resolution. And what you need to do is just have a quick look by turning on the shading for where the data is. So you can see where the 2 meter data is. There are gaps. You know, the, the Environment Agency is not responsible for creating a whole UK wide data set, they're just responsible for the stuff in environmentally sensitive areas or flood areas or anything that's uh, within their remit. So obviously they don't cover everything, but the good news is they make it freely available. Uh, if we look at one meter grid, you can see there's got similar coverages and on 50 centimeter, there's just a small area there, which you'd expect to be um, maybe a flood area or, or um, uh, an SSSI or something, something environmentally sensitive maybe. There's other data sets within here. There's the digital surface model. So DTM stands for digital terrain model and uh, um, the digital surface model that includes everything on the land things like trees and houses and parked cars and all sorts of stuff like that so they will uh, show us bumps on the land so it's really not 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 for our not our bag if you like it's not really what we need um, they do go back as well so you've got um, historical data as well 2015 12 11 7 5 all the way back to 1998 so all you need to do is just download the one you want. There you go. Just click on that and it'll ask you to download a zip file. I won't do that now. I've already done that. So you don't have to sit and watch me downloading zip files. Um, and when you get your zip file, you um, extract it and you'll get, it'll look like that. 
the folder and in that folder will be all of these one meter tile um, one meter grid on uh, a one kilometer tile so we'll use infoworks first and all we need to do these uh, come in a, a format called dot ASC which is an ASCII an Esri ASCII grid format um, a bit like a raster file and I'll use this one SX9192 and just drag and drop it into infoworks tell it what coordinate system you're using we're using the British National Grid and the only other top tip really is that where there is a one kilometer tile with no data in a certain area that maybe splits areas so you've got like holes in it they don't just show it with no holes they have a, a null data value and that's so that anything rather than just saying look if it's got no data stick it at zero which is no good if you're working at um, sea level or close to sea level they stick it 999 meters below the surface so it makes a massive difference and if you type that in here minus 9999 it will ignore all of the null data values click close and refresh and it'll zoom in and give us that tile and it's as easy as that really if you've got the LT version you'll need to if you want to overlay images you'll need to purchase or procure somehow whether you're under um, um, an ordnance survey contractor license or if you're working for a council you already have the data you can get that or you can just buy it from places like eMap site or UK Map Centre people like that if you've got the full version you can overlay it with a Bing map so you use the uh, connect to a data source button which is up there on the right change that to Bing maps look at all the different options you've got in there we'll put it to Bing maps and we call it imagery that's fine and you can pick different resolutions so 19 is the highest resolution it'll take quite a while to bring that in though so I'm going to stick with 17 hit OK and just hit OK nothing appears to happen and you can get that far with LT but with LT version that button there is greyed out and so if you've got the full version you can just hit that button and you'll see that it now goes over to the Bing map says give me the data for this area and then it takes that data and drapes it onto the uh, LiDAR data so you can see there very high quality high quality data if you have LT so let's delete that if you have LT then you need to procure that data somehow so if I go to the Ordnance Survey and buy it I will get an ECW literally just drag and drop again tell it's on the British National Grid most of the OS data already knows it is so it'll come in on the British National Grid it's a good idea to click to the model extents in case you, if your imagery is bigger than your model then you might want to click it but just close and refresh and you've now got your OS data on your on your lidar okay so that's how it works in uh, in infoworks let's have a look at civil 3d there's a couple of ways of bringing that into civil 3d the first one is you can create a surface and you can bring it actually into the dwg um, as as part of the the the, the model um, or you can use the autocode map functions that's built into civil 3d I'll show you that when I do the mapping stuff it's exactly the same as, as it would work in Civil 3D so with the surface you can either create a surface and define it with a D, DGM or a DTM so DTM DGM digital train model digital ground model they're the same thing I'm using the British English version of Civil 3D so mine says DGM yours if it's not the British English and it's the universal English one will have DEM digital elevation model they're all the same thing so you don't need to worry about that and you just need to go and find that file so there it is in that same folder and we'll go 9192 and click open it's going to bring in a lot of data now it's a big old uh, it's a big old data set so <clears throat> there we are lots and lots of data I've brought in some um, the Bing map underneath as well that's just turning this uh, map on or off but of course that's not part of the model if I have a look at the model in 3D, just select it and go to my object viewer. You can see it's quite a big data set, so it is a little bit clunky. Although I am running AutoCAD Map, Infoworks, and um, Civil 3D on my uh, 
my little laptop there we are so that's brought the data in so we've got some good quality ground data in there you might want to do things like um, style style that using um, contours or something like that and just turn that off and that off oh my hand disappeared I'll shut that down and we'll put that to contours and there's our contours and they match perfectly of course with the Bing maps they're not going to overlay it so if you were to bring in aerial imagery you could overlay it onto the surface if you wanted a 3D surface um, and the trick to that is to use the again mapping function but you don't have to go to the mapping workspace mapping workspace is here planning and analysis you don't need to do that if you know the um, command reference to you so just type the word map because it's a mapping function and then think about what you need to do I want to insert an image so I'll type I and there it is map I insert map image insert go and find your image layer there it is the uh, OS master map image layer and open it and okay so that plonks that in the same place now if I select my surface I can drape the image using the drape image button and there we go what that's going to do is it's going to create a render material and that render material will be that image so as long as you have your object viewer set to realistic up there in the top left it will render it up onto the surface with or without contour depending on whether you've got your contours turned on or off but there you go you can see the 3d image with contours which is quite nice now uh, the other way uh, oh by the way I can delete that image now you don't need that image uh, it's still there as a render material so when I look at it in 3d it still will be there the other way is to use the as I say the mapping functions again you don't need to go to the planning and analysis workspace you can just type map w space and it'll ask you to turn the task pane on and off and there's the task pane and this is all the mapping function so I'm going to show you that in AutoCAD map so you can see that you can do this in other products as well so if you've got the infrastructure design suite standard uh, you'll have AutoCAD map and this is how you'd handle that data in there so there's that task pane in AutoCAD map um, and all we need to do is connect to the data source so we'll go data connect to data it's a raster image so we'll pick our um, EA data LIDAR 9192 wasn't it hit open you need to connect to the data source and just add it to your map I could have named it I didn't bother and um, there it is and uh, if we spun that into 3d you can see it's all in there you might want to put a style on there you can just use the style tools maybe put a theme on it what should we do uh, yeah that one US national map palette will do and apply that and okay and there's our, our map and of course if you want to drape an aerial imagery over there again it's just a raster so we'll just go and find our OS master map imagery layer open connect and add to map and it'll automatically drape that uh, in the 3d and there we are so that's the um, the three products civil 3d map 3d and infoworks using a little bit of ordnance survey but the predominant thing there was the environment agency data from data.gov.uk i'll leave my contact details on there so if you want to pause it now and uh, write them down you can by all means contact me um, i'll answer any questions that you have or if you have any other how-to videos you'd like me to do then uh, please feel free to let me know Okay, thanks very much indeed.